Hello everyone, my name is Yuko Wang, a third year PhD student in the CS department at UCSB. Welcome to my talk. Today, I would like to introduce our OSDI paper, Gene Advisor, an Adaptive and Efficient Runtime System for Gene Acceleration on GPUs. Nowadays, graphs are everywhere in our daily life. For example, in social network, we can use graph to model the user's relationship. In financial service, we can use graph to model the transactions. In the molecular chemistry, we can use graph to represent the atom interactions. In the point cloud, we can use graph to model the real world objects. In the power grid, we can use graph to model power grid connections. And in the molecular biology, we can use graph to mimic the molecular structures. To effectively process these graphs, numerous graph analytic methods have been proposed. They mainly targeted at extracting more insight from the graph structures. They generate the feature vectors for nodes, edges, and graphs. There are some important applications. For example, we can use link prediction for friend recommendation in social networks. We can use graph prediction for drug classification. We can use node classification for power grid failure detection. There are two major types of methods the graph neural network method and the traditional graph algorithm method, such as random walks. For graph neural networks, it generally achieves high classification accuracy, better generality for diverse graph inputs, and lower computation capacity. And finally, it is easier for parallelization. Let me start with the basic execution flow of GNNs. GNN combines the graph operations and the neural network operations. Its graph operation is similar to page rank algorithm, where each node would gather its neighbor's embedding information, and its neural network operation would update the node itself based on the gathered information. The right-hand side diagram shows the generic flow of GN model, which repeats the above two steps iteratively. There are two example GNNs. The first one is the graph neural networks, where all neighbors of a node are involved in each layer of GNNs. The second one is graph sum, follows the different patterns of the aggregations, where different number of neighbors are sampled at different hops of distance. For example, in this diagram, we have three neighbors at the first layer and two neighbors at the second layer. After we have a brief overview of GN basics, we will introduce the existing GN frameworks, which can be summarized into two major categories. The first one is the graph persisting framework, which extends the existing graph systems to support NN operations. However, it encounters three major challenges. Their optimizations are tailored for graph algorithms. And second, they are missing operators for NN computations. And third, the lack of programmability and portability. The second one is the deep learning frameworks, which integrate the graph operators to support the sparse graph operations in the existing NN frameworks. However, it comes with two major drawbacks. First, they focus on the programmability and the generality, but lack efficient backend support to achieve high performance on those sparse operations. Second, their major computation kernels are hard-coded without considering the design flexibility, which is essential to handle diverse application settings. By considering all these observations, we would like to introduce our GN Advisor design for adaptive and efficient GN execution on GPUs. Our design consists of several major components, including a loader and extractor to exploit the input level information that can guide our system level optimization, a decider for automatic runtime parameter selection, and a kernel and runtime crafter for input aware kernel adaptation at a runtime. Overall, we are the first to explore the benefits of the input properties, for example, like the GM model architectures and the input graphs. And we gave an in-depth analysis of their importance in guiding system optimizations for GPU-based GM computation. Let's start with the input level information extraction. The first one is the graph information. There are three types. The first type is the node degree information because real-world graphs generally follow the parallel distribution of their node degrees. We remark using the node degree can help us to balance the workload. 
The second one is the embedding dimension. This is the key difference of the GNNs from the traditional graph processing. In the traditional graph processing, each node and edges only come with a scalar attribute, while in GNNs, each node and edge comes with a feature vector. Using such information can guide us to explore the computation parallelism and a more efficient memory access. And third point is the graph community, which describes the patterns of the skewed edge connectivity among nodes in a graph. Because in the real-world graphs, some nodes are densely connected to each other while maintaining very sparse connections with the remaining nodes in the graph. Leveraging the graph community, we can exploit the data locality during the GN computation. One example it is, is illustrated on the right-hand side, where we can effectively reduce unnecessary data loading of the shared neighbors. The second one is GN model information, such as the order of the neighbor aggregation and the node update. For example, in the right side figure, we can easily see the, the difference of the operation order between the GCN layer and the GIN layer. And the second type is the type of the aggregation method, such as the sum aggregation or the mean aggregation. Let's move on to our key kernel level design. We start with the 2D workload management. The first technique we want to introduce is a coarse grain neighbor partitioning. It is a novel workload balance technique tailored for the GN computation on GPUs. It is highly configurable in terms of its persisting granularity, such that we can reduce the workload imbalance from two coarse grain node partitioning and the synchronization, such as atomic operation overhead from two fine grain edge partitioning. Our second design strategy is the fine grain dimension partitioning. It further distributes the workload of a neighbor group along the embedding dimension to improve the aggregation performance. Our third design strategy is the WAP aligned thread mapping. This is in collaborating with our neighbor and the dimension partitioning to systematically capitalize on the performance benefits of balanced workloads. From the left side, we can see that our design allocates individual thread WAP to handle each neighbor partition such that the WAP level di thread divergence can largely be avoided. In the middle, we also notice that WAP aligned thread mapping can increase the memory access parallelism, where memory access requests from different WAP can be processed concurrently without interference with each other. Next, I would like to discuss our specialized memory optimization. The first technique is the community aware node relumbering. We reorder node IDs to improve the temporal and spatial locality of the gene aggregation. It will explore the performance benefits of the graph community without compromising the output correctness. As we can see from the left side figure, after the node remapping, the original irregular graphs are reshaped into a more regular one in terms of its edge connectivity, which will facilitate exploring the performance benefits of data locality during the gene aggregation computation. The second technique we use is the WAP-centric shared memory optimization. We customize the GPU shared memory layout according to our block-level WAP placement. Therefore, we can significantly reduce the number of the atomic operation and the global memory access. To make our design more adaptable, we introduced our lightweight analytic model and a parameter auto-selection scheme. For analytic modeling, uh, the performance and resource analytic model of GN Advisor has two variables. The first one is the workload per thread, and the second one is the shared memory per block. Uh, for parameter auto selection, we determine the value of the neighbor group size and the dimension worker size, and we use two steps. The first step, we determine the value of the dimension worker based on the thread per WAP and the embedding dimension. And in the second step, we determine the value of neighbor group size based on the selected dimension worker and the thread per block. Now, let's take a look at our evaluation. For GN model, we consider two typical models. The first one is the graph convolutional networks, and the second one is the graph isomorphism network. And for data set, we consider three typical data sets to cover different real-world GN application settings. For evaluation platform, 
we consider a server with the Xeon CPU and the Quadro GPU. And we also conduct a study on the DGX1 system. Let's begin with the overall performance. Our design achieves an average four times and two times speed up in comparison with DGL on GCN and GIN during the inference, respectively. And our design achieved 1.6 and 2 times speed up in comparison with DGL on GCN and GIN during the training, respectively. We also analyzed our optimizations for node renumbering and block level design. Our design achieved 1.7 and 1.4 speed up in GCN and GIN with the node renumbering optimization, respectively. And our design achieves averaged 47% and 57% reduction in atomic operation and DRAM access with the block level optimization, respectively. Furthermore, we carry out a set of studies for measuring our design effectiveness, including the data dimension, neighbor group, and the dimension worker. We also test our design on more advanced V100 GPU to show our design adaptiveness. Finally, we study the effectiveness of modeling and parameter tuning under different setting of devices, data, and GM models. Let's summarize our key focus and contributions in this paper. First, we provide an efficient sparse kernel design for GM computation on GPUs. In order to do that, we carry out our 2D workload management and a specialized memory optimization. Second, we offer our design flexibility for handling different inputs. In order to do that, we leverage the GN input level properties, for example, like the graph structure, node embedding size for guiding the system level optimizations. And third, we seamlessly integrate our design with the existing frameworks. In order to do that, we use the PyTorch based front end for high programmability and portability. That's all for my talk. Thanks for your listening.